You're watching Geomodism Total Notary Channel. And we are back in From the Depth with Building a Battleship. And I hope you enjoyed the testing episode we had when we tested against the BBS fifth season by Bungalow Will and Megalodon from Steel Striders in the game. And as you can see, uh, or as you saw rather, uh, this Draconia, this ship, it's quite formidable when dealing with those enemies, even though um, it is not at that sophistication level yet, not at all. We need to fix some stuff. All right. So I know I've, I've been making like really long <laughs> building a battleship videos and I'll try to make them shorter. So this is the first attempt at uh, shortening, shortening in it down a little bit. And as comment suggestions, I have implemented some stuff like moving around uh, barrels in the uh, laser turret. Uh, from my own testing, like with cram shells, I did also change and make the ammunition a little bit different. So now they are actually uh, now we are actually shooting um, shots that are explode from first impact rather than penetration depth in case we bounce on enemy shields and such. These has been made cheaper, um, not sure they're super good but now they're cheaper as well and uh, they are basically um, yeah I made them much cheaper just because I don't know they don't do much to be honest they kind of look more look cool yeah, it's a little bit like that. Ooh, and then I'm thinking about... We got some turrets going on here. I'm wondering if we should put a couple of shields on some other turrets. Um, we still have a couple of power we can use more. So we, probably, we can probably boost our shielding. One thing I probably need to add is additional detections now we got some uh, let me actually be on the ship oh aha that explains it so we'll just warp to it okay that's it that explains why I wasn't riding with it oh yeah <clears throat> well we got the decoys going on there uh, you know so basically I have a camera at each side here. We got some... I should probably add some extra redundant detection. Um, of course this is opened up in a canal and stuff like that. It kind of works. But... Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking we probably need some better detection. And I'm thinking we might need better armor in front of these cannons. The simple way, which I might do, is just replacing this front, like, shield area, like these things. We could probably replace this layer. Yeah, so this layer with, like, heavy armor. And it might actually do the job. <clears throat> you know what, I think, I think that's, it's, that's exactly what we're going to do. Whoop, now we accidentally shrunk everything. Didn't mean to do that. Right, so we're gonna do like this. Heavy armor. We're gonna go with a white paint and just put in some blocks there. So basically like this. And there we go, a little slice through. Oh, actually these blocks too. Because otherwise we won't be uh, completely protected. Let's see there. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, was that really? Okay, yeah. So now, now we have a layer of heavy armor in, the, in there. And hopefully this will solve that issue. Because of these um, heat turrets I mean, they're cheap, what, but we don't want to lose them like that. So that's why. 
uh, just like I needed to armor up these uh, side mortars a little bit because uh, yeah it it wasn't working out quite right now <clears throat> thing is like this these turret I noticed they basically never shoot so they are to be quite frank a waste of space so we need to remove them and we'll, we're, we're gonna see what we can put in there instead but those were not doing the job they were not dealing damage and we need to deal all the damage we can deal like no question about it we, ne we need to deal all the damage these are doing super good job this these this medium gantry system with uh, shaped charge missiles th they're great however this thing my cluster torpedo system it's not it's not doing it it's cool but my why was that <clears throat> yeah it's not it's not doing it's not pulling its weight so to say so we actually need to remove this thing um, and oh yeah and I just realized that we can probably you know what you know what I think what I just remembered we can do like this thank you for teaching me in the comments um, I hold shift and I clicked on the delete button and it got removed just let me check nothing else got removed right these are intact did anything sit too close to this thing I wonder I don't think so all right No, I don't think so. Okay, good. Uh, so it's working. We can just delete the system. We just hold shift, click delete, and it's gone. Boom. So now we're just 1,500,000. That, uh, that did cut a lot of costs. What, what, what are you complaining about? Okay, it's too large volume. Never mind. So basically, this thing was not pulling its weight, so we deleted it. And inside of here, we can put another system. Like, um, probably a torpedo, but not a huge torpedo. They're just too expensive. But yeah, now, now we actually yeah, because it was not dealing enough damage. This was a cluster torpedo, but it was just crap. I couldn't save it. It was a really old. You know what? You know what? Before... Let's go into prefab mode. Let's load the prefab. Let's look at this thing here. Um, it exists. GI cluster doom torpedo. Delete that. Delete. Thank you. We don't need that anymore. We're, we're, we're done with it. Right. So, now we have deleted that. Now we have much more wiggle room to deal some damage. And one thing I really want to make is I want to have decoys. I want to have decoys that go up in the air and uh, just attract enemy shots. And I'm thinking we're going to have a large decoy. Um, we are not completely going to rely on uh, having a decoy that works for like survivability so I think we will actually be happy with just one decoy because I imagine that it will more like take out earlier barrages of, of shots coming in there and we can also we can also put it in quite deep so I'm thinking we kind of have it here somewhere and if I remember correctly it's like two by two so we can have some extra internal armor and stuff like that and we can just launch it up out of this hole and uh, attract some enemy missiles to it so they don't even hit near the ship 
that would be really great. And I never made a decoy like that. Uh, but the, 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 what is it called? If we click this thing, the stronghold has such decoys and they seem quite uh, reasonable actually. Right. With my increased budget, we're actually going to add another of the needles because these are, this is a quite efficient small gantry, like small barrage. And uh, I kind of like this one. So it's it's really pasteable as well. So it's it, it's also a design I'm gonna save for like future builds. Uh, but basically, we're gonna EMP insulate this thing because uh, that makes the survivability so much longer. So here we go, some EMP insulation there. We'll just open up a hole here, and of course, the missile parts can only touch the rubber. And since I already got this thing here, we're gonna try and make a little uh, little prefab of this thing. All right. So we also wanna have uh, the side parts as well, right? So it's gonna be one, is it another one? Yeah, like that, six high. like that and it should be yeah it, that's four right capture the prefab cool can I put it in the air I can then we should uh, do it like this and this and prefab mode again and then I'm gonna save this thing trash Capture, here we have it. And we can save this prefab as the needles and missile barrage. Uh, I was thinking like, hmm, what should I call this thing? And I was like, I already named them, didn't I? Like, not officially, but uh, kinda, since I already call them the needles. Here we go, plop them down there. And now we can just go down here and see if we are. Du, 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 du. Thrust duration, yeah, frag warhead. And we have sharp angles. Yeah, seems pretty nice. And we also even have the little connection here. Channel 2, very nice. Does this. Ah, good, it's not connecting at that side. Good. Then it doesn't lead any EMP. Fantastic. And we can see we armored that a little bit. We're not gonna armor it up super properly, but we do wanna have like a layer of armor going on here. Just because uh, we don't want any explosives leaking through and do any damage. So just some light armor there, like the first one will go, but the second one will be intact and then there is a long space until the third one there. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, and this thing can be removed, and if you didn't know this, you probably did. But uh, you can delete, you can mass delete using prefab mode by trash and skull. There we go. Beautiful. And since we have, like, this is not super cheap, it's it's really not. Uh, like, if we're going to prefab mode, load, you can see it's 15,000 materials it cost. But the torpedo system we removed, that's like, uh, how much is that? That's like a lot. That's like super much. 100 something thousand. Anyways, let's just check these. This has a wider frag cone. Act Raider Seeker, APN Guidance, pa -pa -pa -pum. Like, I need to stalk my missiles and see which do most damage and stuff like that. But I think, I think the needles will be up there. I think they're pretty, pretty good. We need something to frame these in a little bit, I feel like. Um, and I'm thinking that we should probably 
like we we want to use the gold for like details and stuff like that so i think we're gonna go with some probably can have some applique decorations here something like that i think here we have them so i think it looks better uh it's a little bit annoying that like these parts here they kind of stick out a little bit and if i remove them it looks weird but if i keep them it looks weird on this end since i can't put exterior stuff on this area Ooh, maybe i can do some super weird cme fix whatever it, it doesn't look better um i th I, pr I guess it has to look good enough then it's such a small thing and this ship is a mess in general as has been pointed out to me <laughs> but it's true so here we got two tiny radar systems um i'm thinking we might want to now i'm not mirrored but just to have some more structure i don't want it to stick out completely free like that a little bit like that looks a little bit better so now we have radar detection on each side we already got radar detection forwards thanks to on this turret and uh, stuff will take damage so we can't just assume that things will be there all along but uh, yeah i don't know maybe we can uh, do, 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 do. One thing I kind of feel like is that since these shields are like wrong color, there we go. Anyways, that's just small tiny fixing stuff. We do also want to have, uh, like do we have a radar system facing forwards? Uh, we will probably face the enemy, the forwards, most of the time. So it might be a good idea to keep that and now let's see here this is a kind of a good setup for a laser thing but we got laser things on this turret as well uh, and this turret will of course eventually die but hopefully it will be a long lived enough so that it like matters and this thing is quicker it search for heat so it's uh, reasonable it has IR in it we also got 360 IR and camera in basically omnidirection, but not backwards. But yeah, that's that's how it goes. Right. You know what? I just realized we can actually put we can put glass panes in here. Isn't that kind of funny? Just. Uh, I don't know. I think I think these small glass panes are so cute. Oh, that's a beautiful little cage with glass panes on it. This is IR, so unfortunately it will complain if we put glass in front of it. So we got side cameras there and there, and oh, it's possible that it will be a little bit below the waterline. I think, does it have to be above the waterline? I think it does. Let's see here. Yeah, it needs to be above water in order to function. So that's, um, that's not great. Um, since it's, but putting it like one block above won't really save us. I wonder though. Uh, so, let's see here, the radar. Mm, it also has to be above water, of course. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's a nice backup thing, but I think it will be, we'll probably leave it there. Like, I'm feeling a little bit like we probably have enough detection going on here. Um, we got radar camera front and back. We don't have any fixed, we have fixed cameras in front, I know that. There we have a camera. And here we have another camera. So we have fixed cameras in front. We do have radars on turrets, like this turret again has a radar. Um, and 
Maybe we should check with the this build here. This little tower. It has a 360 radar. Alright, it has a 360 radar, so I'm kind of thinking that. Ooh. You know what? Maybe I can have a forward facing radar right here. Line of sight is blocked. Oh, come on. <laughs> It was worth a try, I think, uh, but that didn't work. If we put that there, we will kind of block it off. You know what, I think this is probably good enough. We have the IAIR camera here, I'm not sure actually, I think it's better to have two cameras instead. Yeah, since we don't have very many fast <clears throat> quick counts going on there. But let's actually check um, for the decoy I will make. How much detection offers a radar boy? So, uh, creates 8 times detection per second. This one creates 8 per second. Alright. Angular, angular error in the bearing is 1.5 degrees. Is it the same? Requires two units of general processing power. Uh, range error is 1%, 0.6%. Right, so a radar boy is no way near as good as having a... Uh, yeah, we don't need that then. We don't really need that. Right, so let's see here. Inside here, I imagine we'll have a a little decoy thing. Can we shoot straight up? We can. Um, so we go to missiles. And again, I never built a, a decoy system actually, not like this. Not like a proper one. And we want to have a large one because the larger they are, the more, uh, the better they are as well. Uh, or what to say the larger they are the more uh, the more uh, the more the merrier the more the larger they are the more likability the, the, the stronger they are as well like the, the, if you have huge ones uh, the enemy can really be fooled quite easily but if you don't if you have like a small one uh, it's uh, like not so much anyways um, this doesn't have to be gold no but I kind of think that we should actually try and probably have this a little bit EMP insulated. So we're gonna we're 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 gonna just remove some blocks there and there, and we're gonna build this a little bit into the middle of the thing. So let's see here. We don't have a symmetry plane, and I don't really feel like we need a golden color. Whoops. Free paint. Thank you. Right, so I'm thinking like this, if we have a controller there, ooh, uh, stop, let's a friend of foe attached to stop heat seeking radar and sonar missile torpedoes from targeting friendly units. I don't think we'll need this because it will not be guided, right? It will be completely unguided. Question is just if the enemy will be able, uh, or if our uh, missiles will not target in, target it, because if they do, it will be very sad. And we're gonna have a lot of these as well, <coughs> like a lot of uh, ejection things. I don't know if this is enough. I think it might be sticky flare radar target simulator. Probably need like one more. Um, maybe we'll need more, I don't know. Uh, this is a little bit new to me. Because, yeah. And to be honest, we don't actually need a missile controller. It's enough if we got a missile uh, wireless receiver. Because this will be fired 
as a damage doing missile, I think. So, like that, we're gonna set it to channel 2, because it will be fired with our weapon missiles, right? So as, as soon as our system detects enemies, it will fire the missiles, and this will be a missile that will be fired. So, okay, let's just make a temporary little connection point. God, the water is annoying. There we go. And now this thing should of course have a sticky flare, and we want it to be activated after two seconds. Post ignite flare will be dropped this many seconds after igniting. No, we don't want it to. We don't want it to be dropped, right? Um, or do we? I don't know. Start delay one second. And here we have a start delay. We can probably we can set this to like two as well. I don't know. I don't think we need two radar target simulators, do we? Now this survives for 80 seconds, and I'm wondering if we can have what I thought a little bit about is if we have a ballast tank. <clears throat> and uh, I kind of want to make it float a little bit in the air. I don't know if we can do that. So half, okay. So if we have say, half gravity. All right. I guess <clears throat> I guess half gravity could be here. Oh, well, let's just see if it works. To be honest. And if we check here, ballast tank, dot, 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 reinforced body. So, um, I wonder if we need... We can probably have the sticky flare here, right? Where are you? Sticky flare. And we need radar. Dot, 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 dot. Sticky flare 2. Let's try and not drop the flare. Maybe we should. And I'm thinking we're gonna have a variable thruster. And the thrust output will be like minimal. Oh no, this is too much. Okay, we have the ramp up time to 20 seconds. The thrust at minimum. And we'll activate the thruster after 10 seconds. <laughs> See if this works. All right. So, uh, just for the fun of it, let's spawn a random thing, just to see how how it works. There is the flower, isn't it? Go, damn it! That's that's a little too high, I think. And oh no. <laughs> No. <laughs> you know what? I don't think we need thrusters on that thing. I think with our our current setup thing, we can probably have. Let's just have. Let's have. Oh god damn it! What the hell is this? Whatever. I don't care. As long as you don't crash, I'm happy. I feel like that. Reinforcement. Okay. It has fins and reinforcement. Beautiful. Now the enemies are gone. Goners, goners, goners. What if we spawn a stronghold a little bit far away? There we go. Alright. Oh, there went our flare. Okay. It released the flare there. And it's slowly falling though. Whoa! But we actually got the fins. That's interesting. So it just slightly glides like that in a random direction. And that's cool though. 
How many reloads? Sec how, like, how long does it take to like, fire this thing, I wonder? Time until reload. It just fired. Alright. And it released the flare, though. So I wonder if the, if the, if the sticky flare... Post ignite drop delay. Okay, it will drop. So let it sit on the one then. Right. Du -du -du. Okay. Now it reloads. So maybe if I have like. Oh no, I don't. Uh, one turn or something. No. I want to have reinforced body, right? Now it went up there. So now let's see here. Where are we? Now we are straight up. Okay. Since we don't have fins, we got no drag as well. So that's kind of a high altitude though. I think we gotta do some like testing and see how well it works because I've seen it doesn't have much missiles I don't know how they're steered either Damn, I kinda wanna have a uh, it's half why is it it's like it feels like I made it oh it's because of the reinforced body isn't it that's also made it have more like inertia Oh, yeah. In some regards, this game is too unrealistic, and in some are, oh god, that's a cram shell. I've seen this bug a little bit uh, in this version of Alpha I'm playing, so I need to, I need to restart the game because I know there has been an update coming out. All right. So, can we make this thing? Load. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't think we can actually. Oh man! I just saw uh, negative five is half gravity, and the other one is half gravity applied upwards. So this was completely like the wrong thing. And now I put it to like internal space to EMP, so I don't have any reinforcements because I think it will make it lighter. Uh, yeah, God, I think I think we have some critical bug going on here, but uh, that's fine. All right. Oh, did we just fire that thing? Maybe. There we go. We yeah, that's a little bit too high. Yeah, okay. We basically put it into space with no thruster. Almost. Then it slowly falls. Hmm. You know what? And then it drops down back onto us. If we haven't moved very much. Well, that won't work. So what if we say the regulator, we probably don't need a regulator, it already survives for 80. Probably the fin can be a good idea then. Something like that. So many vertical launch missiles in this thing. Fium, 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 fium. The needles are firing. Let me see here. Uh, here we have empty needle compartments. That's mighty fine. Oh, and here we have the flare. Yeah, that seems pretty efficient. Then it just glides slowly towards the enemy there. Uh, enemy right. Ooh, and this means... Hmm, maybe we should have a sonar boy on this thing as well. In that case. 
and then it just sits here and we can probably distract the anti-missile missiles using this um, quite possibly yeah we're gonna leave it as is we can tinker with it a little bit I think that let's see here we got one two three four pieces and four parts so we can remove a part as well if we really don't need it but the ballast tank half gravity I wonder like negative 0.5 half gravity yeah and it's kind of I don't know these numbers are confusing to me okay this is a little bit awkward what are you doing <laughs> <clears throat> well, you know what, the day from the depth stops lagging and stops have weird bugs is probably the game, it's probably the day the game is dead. I think it will, it will be, I think it will be this forever. It's uh, very likely. Anyways, let us uh, save this thing, like I, I, I try to develop some kind of uh, thing here, but I'm, I'm starting to think that we probably don't need a ballast tank. It seems to not give us any type of benefit. And also, the activation delay is probably not something we need either. Like, they should probably activate right away. We, it can uh, distract them. And if it does, it's uh, like good enough. And uh, now this thing will be a tad bit cheaper to fire. And of course we can fire it in angle or something like that. We could for sure do that, but I think that's uh, kind of good enough. Right, so if we wanted to attach like, I don't know, we can probably just make a tiny little metal hole thing here. And it would be cool if we made this. Yeah, we should we should do it like this. We can do it in like some like some cool detail. Look how nice. And then we can add and I think this will this will probably look great. Maybe. And now we have a ninja star, but that's not what I was looking for. I looked for some smooth circle here. That's kind of nice. I like that. And then we got some of those. So to add some connection points, let's just uh, let's just slap down a little bit of rubber there. Um, and then we can have a little covering armor thing around it. There we go, slap together here, kind of nice. If we lift it out of there, we can see it's, uh, we can protect it with the uh, two blocks there. We don't want to connect anything for the EMP sake. So here we got it, it should be EMP uh, safe basically. And to ensure its safety, we're going to invest in a tiny surge protector here. Uh, in case something hits close by, we got some we got some scary components we can fry easily as well there. Probably want to invest in a double size one there. Okay, they're kind of expensive if you haven't noticed, but uh, if you don't use them, you will get killed by EMP, so they're probably well worth it. Right, so hopefully we got a decoy now that should potentially help us not get hit. And now I'm actually going to build a little torpedo system here. So even though the huge torpedo isn't good enough to like <laughs> continue existing, uh, I think that a large torpedo can probably be something we want there. I don't, I can't remember how efficient these are. 
But I'm thinking, like, how much does eat part 800? Oh, these guys are expensive too. Yeah, so I wonder if we're gonna have... I was thinking like a large torpedo. Whatever do we cost now? Like a launcher costs 2,400. We're at 1.6 million right now. So, yeah, that's fun. So I want a cheaper torpedo system, to be quite honest. But you can see, like, this this area here, it's kind of super protected. So we might as well have a more expensive system in there. Uh, we do enough damage with these things. The medium gantries here, they are kind of good. They're also well protected. So they do their job pretty satisfactory, I think. So, and we have the small, the small, uh, large torpedoes, if that makes any sense, in the side here. And they're kind of good too. They're not so long, but yeah, I need to monitor if these are good enough or if we should replace that with a medium system. But since we are facing the enemy here, I'm thinking we're going to have a remote guided large torpedo here. So that's what I'm gonna make. And now we have a mill here. That doesn't, yeah, that doesn't work. So one thing I noticed is actually that some of the decoy missiles, or no, some of the inter, what are they called? Anti-torpedo torpedoes, they get stuck on this edge here. So I just sloped it a little bit there. And now I just realized we built the little blocks in the air, but that's okay. We didn't do anything more harmful. Yeah, so basically, this torpedo launcher system right here, um, I'm, <clears throat> I'm actually going to make this to a small and medium s missile launcher setup. So I was thinking, should we do... The, tor the should we do the needles but torpedoes and then I thought actually no because the small does so little damage like underwater so we're going to have a couple of medium missiles right here and we're gonna have them kind of within the ship a little bit so kind of down back here yeah I think kind of maybe we can even have them like further back kind of like here and i imagine we can have three of them we can't have them above here because then we'll might bounce and we're just gonna use a lot of uh, or not a lot we're gonna use some of these six to be exact to get them flying out of there a little bit yeah, so that's basically what we're going to do. But um, oh my god, I just realized this is the 100th anniversary of the Crocodile Draconia. We, this is the 100th save. That's so much. And so here is the missile system. We have three missiles. So we have shape charged with max penetration, explosive warheads, an EMP, and a needle frag which is aimed upwards against the enemy. So that's kind of cool. And uh, God, I'm a little bit scared of even like trying things since it's a little bit, it's a little bit unruly, this thing. Because the cram cannon seem to not quite work. They're set up with a one second delay and they have a secondary uh, thruster, so th they can go um, in the air as well. If we have an air target, we can engage them. And I know I've been told that the front fins kind of slow the missile down a lot, and they do slow the missile down a bit, but they are very much, make the, them so much more maneuverable. So it's kind of insane. Now, I don't know what business we are doing over here, though. Okay. Oh, these are... 
Alright. Why? I'm not sure I should trust anything that happens in this game right now. Because the the cramps are not working right. right. So here we have these. They seem to be coming in. Cramps are not okay. They did their thing. Okay, here comes three more torpedoes. Are they awake? Oh, are they going for... No. This is weird. Why? It doesn't seem to be inaccuracy due to not having enough processing power either. So that's kind of weird. Let's see, are, are this thing complaining of it or no? It seems alright. That's so weird. And then I wonder... Like the missile itself. Oh man. Now a couple of them got stuck. That's not good. I will need to fix that. So this thing is... Which channel are we on? We're on channel 1. That should be the right channel for this thing. Yeah, this should be target water under... It should, it should target blocks underwater. Weird stuff indeed. And these missiles seem to be working almighty fine. Alright. I put a signal processor on here. I don't know if they got tricked by the decoys in some weird way. Now it's despawning though, so that's a little bit... But it, it doesn't affect their behavior, does it? Why, where are they heading anyways? Maybe we can just follow them and follow them and see. I found it. It's the AI. So I thought the numbers were saying on the detection and stuff, but here you can see that the proce total processing power is like 35, and the value we need is sometimes up to the 50s. So here we go. These missiles are out. Now it's 39. And it's kind of enough, but when we fired front firing missiles as well, we get into a problem. God, those missiles are scary. I can't believe my defenses let them through. Oh no. Huh? And that's why we have uh, the actual missile blocks far back. God, these are slow too. Why are... Oh, okay. Anyways. That's interesting. Now we fire these. And when we fire them as well. Okay, 35. Really? Alright. We should, we should need more. Detector count. 7. That doesn't make sense. Anyways. I don't know, I think I found some issue here. So, it seems that some of the processing were connected up to the extra AI. And they are on the same channel as the main AI. Because I wanted the extra AI to completely take over. If the main AI would have gotten destroyed. But... Yeah, it doesn't seem to be working kind of as I hoped. Let's see here. And that's just a redundant connection. Let's see, where is the extra A? Did I put didn't I put it in here somewhere? Oh, there it is. So uh general total processing power. It has like sixteen. I don't know why it has sixteen. It's like, if I connect it up again, does it have 60, why? Uh, because the AI itself, I think it has like much less, so let's connect it up. 
disconnect it up. Okay. Do you still have 16? I do. I don't know where they are. Now they just have like 70 processing power. When uh, they did check some connections. So that's that's a little bit sketchy. It's like I need to check these things. They are connected to main, so I manually have to check which is connected to main or not. Uh, I'm not sure I even can have an extra AI connected up to the same channel. It doesn't really seem I can. Um, yeah, it, it causes so much problems. I actually have to transmit this on, on channel 3 or whatever. I don't know if it will help us anything. Or if, if this just will be a dead weight extra AI, but it ain't working. And now this is 83. Okay, now we are like way within our limits. Now we should be able to hit targets and stuff. There we go. 80 processing power. General uh, processing power needed. 37. It will go up to like 60 in sometimes. Oh god, I just realized I completely removed the <laughs> remote guidance. <laughs> like these guys don't even have. <laughs> oh, Jimodism, what are you doing? Okay, here we go. Um, copy to matching lounge pads. Oh man. So I've been. Ah, oh, no wonder they all kind of look like dump fire. And I was just so tricked because the game is like lagging so much, I'll need to restart it. Like the cram shells get stuck in the air, so it's a little bit weird. Okay, let's go here. Because these guys also have APN guidance. You can combine it with remote guidance. I didn't know that. I just saw a video from Bungalow Bill about remote guidance and you can apparently tune the... Uh, Apparently, you should tune the gain to higher than it like is set uh, on the APN guidance. I mean, it works well with just normal APN guidance setting, but you can boost the gain to even higher. They'll jitter around a little bit like this, but you can be quite more likely to hit like moving targets and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And now we can see they are really know they really know what they are doing. So let's slow down time. Because these are set to aim at a block under water. Let's see what type of a uh, beautiful destruction we can get here. And there we go, the missile in front of it had an explosion. And here we go, this missile has an explosion. Whoops. Did I? Oh no, I, I kind of missed, messed up. Okay, so there is an EMP signal, right? We EMP'd something. And we should have spread out some... Uh, da -da 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 detonation stuff here. Should have been some frags going on there, but of course... Uh, I can't see them now. But there we go. The torpedoes are indeed. So, uh, we do have... Still have a budget for building stuff. Um, destroy all enemy vehicles. And we can just go on here and set it to max speed. And I've set these missiles to fire something called full salvo. So that's why you can see them just like shooting. Just emptying the chambers like that. That's because they are a full salvo system. Which makes me want to check in case... Nice. Go here. Yeah, so they're all connected up to channel 2 here. Just double check. Channel 2, channel 2. And channel 2 is set to fire full salvo. No, salvo, okay. Fire all of... 
all of launch pads once a single trigger pull, all stop. All stops if there is no available missiles uh, on a stagger step. Okay. Salvos that only initiate firing when all undamaged launch pads. Okay. Uh, so salvo, I mean. The full salvo sounds cooler, but it's actually less brutal. Stop stagger firing when uh, trigger is released. Yeah. So we set them to salvo just because we want it to be uh, we, w we want them all to shoot and get to a target because in all likelihood these guys will probably reach some kind of target and there we go so i hope our decoy is doing something i think it does we changed the crams to be better we improved some of the armor there uh, and god damn it, I said I'm going to start. Oh, we're already up in one hour. How is this possible, Jim? How, how can I be this extreme? <laughs> Anyways, these guys, uh, we need to have some turret there, but I think I'll need to come up with some type of turret to put there a little bit later on. Uh, maybe you can give me some ideas on what to put there. I'm thinking maybe some kind of mortar turret. Maybe some kind of missile launchers, maybe um, just anti-missile missiles or something. But in any case, we're up at 1.6 million so far. Tiny little bonus section since I haven't really finished the video yet, uh, so I can throw it in there. I built another cram turret and I wanted to have an extra cram turret to deal some damage against the enemy. And of course, I couldn't have a super big cram cannon. So what I had to end up with <clears throat> is uh, this 3D Tetris uh, thing, which is, if we look like that, a four barrel cram cannon, right? It has some interesting little noodles inside of there. And we got four fat barrels. It's a, it's a 2,000 gauge system uh, on a little three, three turret like there. And it has, you know, all the cannons are a little bit different, but uh, they're basically armor piercing exploding inside with uh, a combination in various proportions of high explosive, EMP and frag <clears throat> in different degrees of narrowness. So that's kind of it. Um, and I think it's time to just test shoot this little thing. So I inserted it in a little uh, turret area right down there. And of course, if the enemy comes to the side, we'll have a little bit of an issue if it's uh, from there, but it's if it's straight ahead, it should be fine. Uh, which the enemy should be, they should be straight ahead. So, um, now I utilized, I, I used the multi-barrel thing, you know. So, it, they have, kind of have reload of a minute. So, of course, we need to sync these up a little bit. And set them in a nice angle. And there we go, my favorite angling. Like, angle them up so we kind of spread them out a little bit. So, it's not kind of the same spread. So, that's cool. Uh, right, so hopefully this turret is worth the money. Let's see how much it actually costs. Uh, this is a 24,000 uh, turret. And hopefully it will be sturdy enough to withstand some firepower. Anyways, that's just what I wanted to add. Anyways, thanks a lot for, thanks a lot for watching. This is Jim Odessimor signing out.